Hello, here we are in Ojai, California. I am Philosophical here with Pete, a.k.a. Yuen Huzami. We're going to talk a little bit about what he's been working on, a project collaborating with the Shipibo people of the Amazon, fusing in more modern music. So could you explain what you're here for and what your mission is with this on album? This, on this planet? On this planet, why, I'm here, why am I here? Why are you in this sector of the galaxy? <laughs> like, what's going on? Well, um, I mean, in in Ojai here, it's really beautiful to come and connect with this place and see this place for the first time. It's it's really beautiful. Thank you for inviting me up here. Absolutely. Um, I'm just really in a in a place at the moment of sharing uh, this this new project that I've just completed and and just in the process of sharing with people now, um, which is, uh, I mean, obviously there's a lot of background that's needed with the, the Shipibo people and, and who they are and what what makes them so amazing and special. Um, yeah. uh, but basically, yeah, I have, a, in a nutshell, it's a, it's an album of uh, Shipibo Ikaro, which are their medicine songs. The Shipibo are a tribe from the Amazon jungle in Peru. And... Um, the most biodiverse part of the planet, um, the lungs of the, the earth, and um, uh. exactly <laughs> our, our mother's lungs. Thank you, Amazon. Exactly, thank you for the air, Amazon. So, um, and the Shipibo obviously have a really uh, long history in that area, a very strong connection with the with the land and the plants down there. Um, beyond, a very very deep connection with the plants, and so. Also, great knowledge of um, medicinal uh, uses of plants, and a whole a whole another broad perspective of, of of their own healthcare system. So, a lot of that is energy that's coming through from the plants that they're channeling through themselves, uh, quite musically. And this is kind of like a overall of you know basic understanding of how the medicine songs work is them channeling. Um, energies from the plants and this is how they they heal and so i've taken i wouldn't say i've taken but i've um certainly collaborated with with um with their support and their permission to um record with inside uh, a lot of uh, traditional ayahuasca ceremonies um and outside as well the day after you know but very much medicine within this whole process um i've had this wonderful opportunity to record with them and um and my vision for this really is to um, create music that is a vehicle for this this healing to come through for. So, yeah. um, to I mean, the Ikaros traditionally with the Shipibo, they don't um, they don't play in bands. They don't have. <laughs> They're not on iTunes yet. Strings. Well, they're probably working their way out there. Uh, I'm sure now, thanks to people like me, yeah. you know, jamming with them and with that stuff, but. So it's a fairly foreign thing. It's totally um, verbal, a cappella, um, solo on the voice sort of singing tradition. And, but it lends itself beautifully to um, different types of music. So I've tried to create a really diverse and beautiful musical soundscape that to an extent is trying to be a, uh, like the, the audio equivalent of the visionary aspect of working with ayahuasca and with medicine. So this wow. is the way that worlds could open up for you in your mind's eye and your third eye and your vision field with that the same way that it, you know i want the music to open up like that so wow so it's, it's kind of a synesthesia element with mixing different senses together or? yeah definitely yeah mm -hmm. just um yeah a, a, a sort of vehicle and extra sounds to just sort of uh, i hope complement the the, the the powerful medicine work that's already there and yeah. to provide a, an album for people that they can hear uh listen to in, in a, a wider variety of formats you know than mm -hmm. with the we found that in ceremony ikaros are, you know obviously being sang directly to you is is, is so phenomenally powerful yeah um and to be in that space sharing that as well that's um that's when they're obviously at their most you know powerful beyond what i had previously imagined singing to be yeah um, and but whereas outside of it and out of context, um, it, it, you know, I didn't find myself listening to pure Ikaro recordings that much um, outside of it. Mm -hmm. But when I do, it's such a beautiful reconnection to the medicine. But yeah. 
by themselves it's sort of it's it's more set up for like really sitting down and creating the space and mm. building a whole sort of ceremony around them so i've i've tried to work with the very like light side of this music and yeah. with the, a lot of the love that's in it you know that's really um mm. very much in the heart <laughs> and creativity and that kind of vibe that 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 this you know very powerful within this music and yeah. um create music that you can listen to in a more situations so in your yeah. car you know when you're cleaning your house whatever at a festival <laughs> you know meditation yeah you name it but that it's music that's suitable for all these other circumstances that that we we find ourselves in in our re everyday lives in in and around cities and our sort of you know mm -hmm. current culture yeah that that makes it a easier bridge to to take in this this healing so um, yeah. it's a, a spoonful of sugar to help the medicine go down it's a very very long explanation of no of that's it, beautiful i i really feel like you're building a bridge between this part of the the world that not many people have access to mm. and bringing it back and sharing it using the power of the internet so that more people can at least have this this concept of of plant medicine healing on their radar mm. and i'm curious what what the name of the album means to you um the album name is Hakun Shama, and it's uh, I've I've sort of loosely translated it to meaning good spirits. Uh -huh. It's not necessarily the the definitive definition of it, but it's something <laughs> that we at least can relate to in terms of like you know a lot of times when you talk about you know the, the, a literal translation of it might be more something along the lines of bringing or attracting good energy to myself. Yeah. So right. being happy being in a good space good energy but you know when the word energy isn't totally ex uh, accepted by all people some people when you yeah. say good energy they don't actually really understand yeah exactly what you mean they think like electricity like you know <laughs> like to fuel the turn the lights on like yeah what you know whereas energy being what everything's made from this is good energy love energy and that's um yeah. I figured it was kind of easier for, for the Western mindset to, to grapple with um, good spirits, you know, in good mm -hmm. spirits, high spirits, and of that kind of thing, and also very much the in reference to the, the spirits that are plant spirits and the whole spirit world is very fundamentally part of the mm -hmm. Shibiro kind of perspective, you know. Wow. Mm -hmm. So you were telling me earlier how previous to your experiences with the Shipibo and with ayahuasca, you were kind of skeptical whether these things like spirits or the wider realms of reality were actually real. Could you explain maybe ex an experience where it was just flat mm -hmm. out shown to you? I mean, sure. I mean, you'd have to go a fair way back to call me um, skeptical, mm -hmm. but what I was lacking was any real first-hand experiential proof of it. So. Yeah. I read for years, I studied and, and was researching and was 10 years in the making of, of YouTube and listening to lectures from everything from physicists to spiritual people, conspiracy things, ex-government, whatever kind of stuff, you know, like yeah. reading a lot of books and trying to sense what, what, you know, resonated with me as something that felt like it might be a clue in the, what really was going on in the world because I didn't believe the mainstream media's version of it. The I always thought that was like a thin veneer of trying to disguise a whole bunch of dodgy <laughs> shit going on underneath it. I call, I call it the mainstream strange dream. Mainstream strange dream. Totally, <laughs> totally. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, really for me, uh, what, what ayahuasca did for me was, um, it took all of that, uh, in the mind, intellectually having understood these things as concepts yeah. that I, I really believed and I knew in my heart to be true, yeah. but they were beliefs. So if someone, were, you know, if I was to tell you a few years ago um, or prior to working with the medicine in Peru, um, well, I'm pretty sure that uh -huh. there's more that we <laughs> realize there is, yeah. that there's spirit world, there's other dimensions, we have this infinite godlike yeah. nature within ourselves I, I wasn't a hundred percent certain about it because mm -hmm. I, I didn't I hadn't really been experienced anything that was going to actually like prove it to me yeah. I didn't think that there was any proof out there yeah. ayahuasca for me and other plant medicines you know peyote and uh, iboga you know these really strong 
teacher plants uh, for me are the, definitely the proof that I was looking for. And now that's opened up a whole other chapter. So could you please describe what it was like actually being in ceremony with these Shipibo medicine workers? Intense would be one word for it, um, especially in the earlier work. My first kind of workshop of ceremonies was um, was really intense. It was hugely visionary trips to total other dimensional places and a lot of teachings within that, but essentially it was just being stripped of, of blockages, energetic blockages and rapidly I mean you can feel the medicine like scanning your body and when it finds something that's not perfect <laughs> which is plenty it's yeah. like hones in on it and it will see if there's an emotional blockage attached to that then it will stir up that emotion within you and it brings the Shipibo way is very surgical to get right to the root of things and literally remove them so deep things that we hold on to things that I, I never even knew were even wrong with me yeah. um, that like I, that I can't access in my day-to-day -day awareness yeah. no matter how hard I would try to meditate I, I can't get that deep yeah. so this tool with ayahuasca and with these experts in working with it and it, it, it's it's like would be the equivalent for me of, of like pressing pause and going into like the pit stop you know mm -hmm. so the medicine you know it's like getting a, a total outside perspective not being yeah. stuck in my thoughts and a, a victim mm -hmm. of my own you know things that have developed and hardwired in mm -hmm. when I was like an infant all the way up in the early yeah. years to shape me but to like time it out and and step back from it with this whole world of spirits and this support from like f vastly more intelligent higher dimensional presences which could even be myself at a higher level or mm -hmm. it could be the plant spirits or yeah. all of the above if you name it yeah. the angels you know, whatever yeah. you know people call it in different cultures but it's like to sit there and get this clarity and go here's what this means this is where this came from and even like meeting some of my earlier traumas and and kind of like resolving things directly with my own emotions and saying i'm so sorry that i didn't release you that I just mm -hmm. bottled you away and, and just left you like how yeah. like I've just abandoned you you yeah. know it's like really mean of me yeah to see them and to actually see them for what they are and experience what they are to fully absorb the pain that they are mm -hmm. to this is how they bring it up and then out to re relive it to which is very difficult for a lot of people for a lot of circumstances but the most effective psycho you know physical psychological type of healing that I knew was possible wow. total metaphysically you know fixing mm -hmm whatever you know so it's like seeing that and then these emotions it can then just say finally I feel like I've been listened to and mm -hmm. cool that's yeah. all I need like like a ghost that's been yeah. resolved its work is done the thing that kept it laying around was you know resolved it solved the thing or whatever <laughs> and it's got closure <laughs> and off it goes is solved, yeah. and literally like experiencing these blockages of darkness then like floating up through the plants and into the sun and creating more mm -hmm. light which yeah. is consciousness you know so mm -hmm. effectively shining a light on our shadows to yeah. see what lurks at the heart of those shadows yeah. and then seeing what it is and then by only by knowing what it is then can you open that blockage and release it and mm -hmm. even though it's like hugely demanding on you physically um and could be the hardest night of your entire life because it was literally a combination of all of the hardest things of your entire <laughs> life that you had to face again. By and large, people you see the next day that are, are like been throwing up their all kinds of things and coming out whatever any way it can to get out of your body, they feel so like wiped out, but they look amazing. <laughs> and they're like, their eyes are shining brighter yeah. and you give them one night's rest and they're like, like a whole new person. Wow. And so, this is the level of healing that can be achieved down there. And for the Shipibo, I mean, they're not, they don't see things in this over mental, mentally complex, mm -hmm. compartmentalized way that we do. Yeah. They see it very simply of, you know, it's a blockage. Yeah. It's bad air that you're holding on to. You breathe it out, you know, come on, you know, and, yeah. and everything, it'll pass. Yeah. Everything in the jungle is constantly breaking down reabsorbing into the jungle <laughs> becoming new life everything and i experienced my own 
emotions like that and my own darknesses and shadows that they can live their life, that their energy that's stuck in me and they're not serving a purpose. So they need to be released and yeah. they're going to get my attention in any way necessary to, mm -hmm. to finally give them the respect that's due to them, yeah. to release them. And if, and if I don't, if we don't, when we don't, which we often don't, mm -hmm. these things, they just build, build, build yeah. till they get our attention. And that could be serious imbalances in the body, yeah. health, health issues, you know, the, just seeing how it's all linked with, you know. Yeah. Wow. mental, uh, psychological, physical things and vibrational things. Yeah. yeah. That's just one small part of like the experiences that could be yeah. experienced out there. Well, that's, that's <laughs> marvelous. I'm curious how you think that that as a microcosm, microcosm relates to our larger society and how our society is as as civil planetary civilization is is scared to to look at its own shadow side and mm -hmm. and its own darkness and how this process of healing could be achieved on a, on a larger scale. It's a brilliant. It's a really really important question. You know, um, I hope I can give some shed some light on it with an answer. But mm -hmm. I think it's a really big one. Um, I mean really seeing how everything is just a, a, a fractal version of it you know that we're 70 percent water the earth is 70 percent water if you look at a, an atom you know it's like the nucleus with the electrons spinning around it and it's super fast you know yeah. then you look at the sun with the planets orbiting around it mm -hmm. it's just it's, it's the same thing but at a huger scale so yeah. needless to say that um you know we're only be going to become more aware of that if we're not already aware of the patterns that mm -hmm. are within the structure of nature and reality, you know. So, for sure, I mean, we've got so much dirty laundry as a, <laughs> as a, as a species and we're yeah. not looking at our problems. We're totally blinkering. Oh, that's not happening. Uh -huh. Oh, that's not <laughs> happening. We all know at least now that the media and that it's, it's totally corrupted by, you know, conflicts of interest, mm -hmm. greed, power, yeah. um, taking over resources. You know, we will do horrible things and we'll back our governments. And, mm -hmm. you know, we, we, we're aware and becoming more aware, but we're still not actually looking at what they are mm -hmm. for any kind of, we're not putting our energy towards actually trying to fix it. And, mm -hmm. And it's totally the same thing that, that we are exactly we are like we're getting cancer now everyone's going to die from cancer at this rate that's mm -hmm. what we will die from it's just a matter of when yeah. because the body's so imbalanced it can't defend itself from the cancerous cells that are always there anyway but the mm -hmm. body can regulate so the same thing all of these like hideous toxic you know nuclear plants sinking into the ocean killing whole oceans you yeah. know off of japan yeah. coal seam gas drilling down and pumping benzene into like deep underground water yeah. supplies so that this beautiful spring in this creek in this beautiful part of the world that we come to to escape from the bullshit of mm -hmm. of that that we drink that and then suddenly like you know get yeah. sick potentially from like benzene poisoning it's like uh -huh. this pervading things yeah i mean i think there's a huge huge relevance there mm -hmm. and a lot of probably different examples of, of mm -hmm. how that how things work at you know reflecting our, ourselves yeah yeah so do you feel like by doing the self-healing that has an effect on the collective yeah i think so i mean and in a lot of different ways part of it being that um once you're aware more aware of something yourself and you've learned from your own lessons mm -hmm. and you've learned from some of society's lessons you'll be less likely to um to to continue to be a part of that problem mm -hmm. you know? and for me I've always found it quite important for a long time to you know to, to at least not be consciously contributing my energy towards the problems that we face and mm -hmm. a lot of people's jobs that they work um, you know just doing my job just doing my duty yeah. you know well what if who's making you do what yeah and it's your energy your spirit you know amazing vehicle mm -hmm. that you have you really do control your energy mm -hmm. you can take back all of your power and what you invested into so i think it's really important um to to invest that into positive things you know yeah. and things that feel right things that are in tune with joy and happiness and love and you know mm -hmm. that are like aren't like oh, i feel good in a dirty way but i've just screwed people over but like just yeah. generally like you know and you feel it and yeah. it's lacking for a lot of people a lot you know mm -hmm. that whole 
creative natural resonance of joy and beauty and love you know so it's um yeah um how do i bring that back on topic yeah well well i feel like what a lot of people tend to say is that there's all these big problems in the world so i need to run at them and solve them all myself but i don't want to take the time to to heal myself because who cares if i heal myself i have to like stop the nuclear plant and stop yeah, the pro yeah. and, and protest and i was in that that mode for a long time yeah. So it's like this balance of changing the outer world, changing the inner world, changing the outer yeah. world, changing the inner world. And I feel like that your your process reflects that in that you spend 18 months in the jungle doing, doing the deep healing work on yourself. Mm. And from that, you're bringing this project now to the world to, to share and help to change the... Mm. That the collective reality yeah i mean we're all doing a bit you know yeah and, and i i feel like i'm part of a larger plan that i need to know you know i uh -huh. only can see so far ahead but i'm guided yeah. in a way to you know maybe someone hears it and it helps them in a positive mm -hmm. way i feel like there's really positive things coming from this and i'm working very much in alignment to keep it positive in every aspect with this you know. so if any of you watching this want to check out you and or pete's work uh where can we find this new album at um everything at the moment's on my website um which you can check out it's uh www.youandwhosarmy.bandcamp.com uh, uh that has hokunchama this new shipibo collaboration album it also has the ripple effect um and it has a, a lot of my artwork as well, a lot of my visual visual art, sacred geometry, mandala sort of stuff too. So yeah, you can check it all out there and have a look and see if you like it and potentially buy it if you like to. And 50% um, of the money that I raise with Hakunchima, I'm going to reinvest back to Shipibo communities, the healers and their families, and also to an NGO, Alianza Arcana, that's working with uh, Shipibo communities that, in the hopes to give back to help to, you know, do, do some part as much as I can to um, uh, sustain future generations that have this knowledge, you know. Wow. Well, that's Amazing really... Amazing knowledge, yeah. That's really beautiful, brother. Thank you for being here. Oh, cool. pleasure, here, right? here in Ojai, California, building bridges right here, and he's he's building a bridge with the, the Shipibo people and all the amazing stuff happening down in the Amazon, so... The audio bridge from the jungle to you. Enjoy. Yes. Have a beautiful day, and please check out the links below. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. All right. Well, two conscious rappers hanging <laughs> out, doing an interview. How could we not bust a, bust a cypher? Bust it out. All right. <laughs> so here we go. Mm -hmm. So let me tell a little bit about the medicine It is heaven sent, it's for the betterment Of my brethren, the people of the planet That's right, just some difficult things But yet we understand it, it's coming back around Full circle, that's right As we circle around and gather around in a sacred space That's right, and I just kicking raps with my mates adjacent To me, we're sent to each other Just to rock it out and give a little clap and shout out to our brothers and sisters around the globe that's right they profoundly know in my heart it's really deep and it transmits that's right as i said once more so you understand it it's coming from our click that's right boom, boom, coming through boom, 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 boom. say get out the way let the universe play get out the way let the universe play get out the way let the universe play play